getting to the finish line. Hey, welcome back. Finishing up this climb. Just got the cable strung through it. Now I just need to put the wheels and attach the derailleur cables and brakes and do some finer adjustments and call a wrap after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. Taking scary out of used bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Working on this old bike series. This Klein Quantum Race is about done. To the finish line we're at. Gonna wrap it up with some bar tape. Uh, the frame has been detailed, but I did a lot of extra work on this one. Kind of knew it when I was walking into this, but you know, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be one solid bike for somebody just to get into road riding. But what turned out is I needed to replace the wheels, so a little bit nicer wheel set, uh, matching brakes, so I got some 105 brakes on there. It did have a mix of 9 and 10 speed componentry, shifters and brakes and so forth, the levers. So I went ahead and switched them out to a 9 speed uh, shifter triple to match the crank and the front and rear derailleur, but the chain cassette was a 10 speed, so I swapped those out, put a new nine speed chain on there. So, kind of re just rematched the group in a sense that it doesn't it doesn't follow on exactly the spec sheet from back in 2000, early 2000s when this bike was made, but pretty close to the same vintage of parts. So that way it's kind of, kind of just ties it together more more appropriately. Um, it's gonna be nice. I mean, you got nine speed back with a triple front. You got a wide range of gears, do a lot of climbing. These frames are fast. Look at the detail frame or the frame example um, in this video here. That actually goes into a lot more detail of the actual climb frame and what makes, makes manufacturer different from each other. So you can kind of get the understanding between Trek Specialized Giant, Le Mans, Klein, all those other brands. So, you know, that kind of thing, I understand. But these are a classic with a wonderful paint job. So I did a very awesome detailing on this and it's gonna pop in the sun. But anywho, without further ado, let's just get into this wrapping it up. So I got some nice bar tape here. And I have a soft spot for clients um, because it, back in the day, my parents and I, we had a bike shop in Parker Bikes in Parker, Colorado in the 90s. We were a Trek dealer. And when Trek was doing acquisitions of buying these particular um, brands, they were they were purchasing like the Le Mans name, the Trek name, or the Klein name, Bontrager, Rolf, and Gary Fisher. Um, and they were kind of, kind of, uh, you know, sliding those brands into multiple bike shops and in our, you know, all across the nation. But it kind of like in our example in Parker, we had a competitor, Destination Cyclery. And uh, they carried, um, they had at times specialized when we were Trek. So what they did is they snuck in Gary Fisher in Le Mans in that store, gave us Klein and Bontrager. Um, and Bontrager at that time was making mountain bikes and a couple other, like a, a cyclocross and road bike. They were still being made in San Jose, San Jose, I believe, California. And, or Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz. And, you know, it was like one of those situations where they were kind of like getting, trying to pull money out of all the little markets and all the bike shops. And that worked for a few years and eventually it kind of just blew apart. Um, it was specialized, decided to, Concept stores became a big thing. It's like either be a Trek concept or a specialized concept store. Um, fast forward to the early 2000s and Parker Bikes, unfortunately we had a close. Um, then I moved up to Fort Collins, Colorado, where I worked at Lee Cyclery, which they carried Trek and Specialized at that time frame. And I got to learn a lot about Specialized, which was awesome. But on the flip side, when they went to do full corporate or concept stores, what that put us into is I had to pick one or the other. Apparently, Lee Cycler wasn't big enough, better look, um, to support both. There's a couple of shops that I know of that they do a big enough volume that they did both, basically told both lines to go up themselves because, uh, you know, we did, they did so much volume, so they carried both. But that was not quite a norm amongst a lot of the other shops. So they're kind of just stuck uh, doing that. Uh, I understand the concept of what um, the owner of Lee's Cyclery decided to go with Trek because 
Well, they have like four lines. I mean, they had Gary Fisher, they had Lamont and uh, Klein and Bontrager Parts and Rolf Wheels. So it was kind of like one of those things where, well, do you want to pick five lines, four lines and keep one as a concept? Or do you just want to take a super specialized? So I don't know the details of how it all hammered out, but the competitor carried Specialized, which uh, they were Peloton, which they were a great shop too. Good people there. Um, it's kind of one of those things like the owners competed against each other, but all the staff either worked or both of the shops at one point or another. So it's kind of like as a staffing, we're a community and like, oh yeah, you know, oh, he's working for Peloton now. Oh, okay. You know, and, and we had a good rapport amongst ourselves anyway. So we're, that's where I have the soft spot for Klein because I've been working with Klein's or have been in shops with Klein's, including my parents' mom and pa shop. And that was, you know, a really cool transition. Um, I mean, I feel bad for Klein because he, you know, he, he was trying to give it a go for it and just basically, financially just got really tough. A lot of shops, had, a lot of brands had a problem with that in the 90s. But at the end of the day, I think it worked out really well because it taught track how to weld and use higher grades of aluminums and actually built these in the United States along with a lot of the bikes in the United States as, as what at the time. They were trying to build pretty much a good 90% of the bikes in Wilder, Wisconsin. And they were doing a pretty good job of it until it's just uh, mid 2000s just couldn't do it. And there's probably several different reasons, but my guess would be is uh, they just couldn't compete with the manufacturing departments over there and the pricing. So, but they, you know, get, they gave it a, give it a go, you know, it was, it was pretty cool. Um, and the client was a very intricate part of including aluminum, you know, taking aluminum to the next level in the industry, as well as, um, you know, the, the Trek brand. So, it was a pretty good, pretty good run. Um, and also he was an older guy. He did his MIT in the seventies, I believe, and uh, developed this uh, granulate aluminum, which is a mixture of aluminum alloys um, to lighten it up and had probably a lot more tech specifications than I could ever um, remember. But they, they were pretty cool. And I'm riding a client right now, which is, a little bit newer model of this, but not too much. And it rides great. It's fast. It's um pretty, pretty fun ride. And I've ridden a couple of the hardtail ones. Also, I have a Klein mountain bike, which is nice as, as well. I've always wanted one of those. And I got that one to uh, do some fun local trail riding. More old school, nothing too serious. My days of, of super aggressive mountain biking are pretty much gone. But I still like to go out and have some good times. So, get this guy up, nicely wrapped up, like so. Put the cable plug in there. So yeah, wrapping, you know, the clients are really nice and they're wrapping this up and I'm pretty, pretty excited to finding one of these. They're starting to get harder and harder to find. I mean, they're obviously, they're not, they, you know, they made a lot of them, but they are kind of disappearing. There are some very strong groups out there that do follow the Klein. You know, they still buy and refurbish and, and they have a good, good presence. And you'll see a lot of these trickle technologies into the current bikes of today, even. So, so that was pretty cool. I'm sure he's a long time retired and not planning to do a comeback. But you know, it's one of those things. If he did, hey, yeah, that'd be great. It'd be a lot of fun. But um, it's also kind of really fun to work on these guys and know a little bit of history. And it's like being there back in the day, seeing it actually unfold when they were acquisitioned and you know, Trek built their brand up, and which was really nice. They, let them take the lead on him in the sense of not just make the same frame for all four or five companies. It was like a Klein was a Klein. A Gary Fisher was a Gary Fisher. 
uh, Trex was still a Trek, and you know, the road bikes, Oman was still Oman, and talked with geometries, and you know, they shared a little bit of attack, but it was, you know, for the most part, they kept them very uniquely different. So you're not looking at the same bike, but just with a different paint job, which I thought it was pretty cool for them to uh, do. So, and not that they can do that today, because the cost of expenses of doing such a thing is a little too much for manufacturers to do, so. You got yourself now in a situation where, you know, you still have a Specialized and they have their own unique style. And you have Trek, but Gary Fisher is no longer part of Trek. And uh, Klein isn't either, so the last of the holdouts is really just Bomb Tracker, I think. And then you're doing the parts. Rolf either moved on or retired. Um, oh yeah, Gary Fisher and Klein retired. And, well, Le Mans, well, that's a whole nother story. Le Mans started making their own bikes down south. Um, and uh, more of a electric assist, comfort type bikes, which is kind of cool in, in its own way, for sure. And, uh, but these old classics still blow the doors off of the new stuff. That's the bottom line, entry level. I can guarantee you this bike is going to ride and probably outperform any $1,500 road bike with the bottom line componentry that's new. So doing something like this, bringing it back to life, you know, it's just a, it's a real pleasure to do. And it's also uh, kind of fun to find these guys. And unfortunately, they are far and few between. So if you get an opportunity and you see a Klein bike that's in your price range and your size and you're an avid road rider and looking for like, oh, I want to try something different this summer or this season and pick yourself up a Klein or a Le Mans. But Klein's going to have its own kind of Ferrari feel. It's fast. Um, yeah, it's, it's quick. I would suggest try to find something with a little bit of carbon, but hey, you know, try it out. You know, just get to get to really understand that geometry, which is kind of fun. Then then try a Mans, then try a Trek, and then try a Specialized and Canadel, and you know, throw in a Serata in there with a Titanium. And, you know, oh, it's all about fun. You get to this level, and you're like, I've been in it and doing it and riding it for so long. Hey, why not try something different? I'm really having a great time because every three or four months, I just swap another bike and switch it out and just have some fun with it. You know, it's like, I only can ride one bike at a time, ride this for a while, then I'll go and try to ride this for a while. I do have a couple staples that I won't sell. They're just my, you know, the bikes I'm going to hold on for a long time and, you know, my go-tos. But other than that, cycling is fun. It doesn't matter if you're road riding, mountain biking, fat tire, e-bike, whatever. Have a good time with those two wheels, maybe three. You know, those tracks are fine too. Awesome. Well, thank you for spending time with me in the garage. I hope you have a wonderful day. Get out of your bike and go riding. Check out this beautiful picture set.